This is Cameron. This is Nathan. This is David. And we're the commentators, and we're commentating on a movie meant to rebound from the utter filth and disgust of <laughs> Wild Wild West. <laughs> well, the only thing we'd say was Samba Hayek has a spectacular ass. Well, she does. Well, yeah, but I'm saying that's the only good part we can say about the movie. <laughs> With a movie that is so awesome that it has actually achieved world peace in our time. Just like Bill and Ted were supposed to with their music, Keanu Reeves is in his own with this movie known as John Wick. We have a feast before us today. Of wings, onion rings, and fries. And I'm not just talking about a feast of carnage and violence that we are about to witness. Because there is a shit ton of it in this movie. And it's glorious. It really is. <laughs> and let everyone know, as I'm watching this movie blind, I have not seen this film before. Kind of like me with uh, Sallow. And this movie has just as much people eating shit. Mm -hmm. And yeah. But, but, the, more, but, the, but, the, but the shit is more like bullets, it's I guess you could say. It's, it's figurative. It's figurative, shit. yeah. <laughs> It's actually nice to see another car, because we haven't seen a lot of films that set contemporary times. That's actually true. Come to think of it. It's a good point. Was Halloween 3 the closest? That was the closest. It was. We saw him driving a car. That was the closest to modern day that we've seen, whether it's the past or the future. <laughs> now, it is, now it is modern day. It is modern day. Because well, he has a smartphone. Yeah, he has an iPhone, so it must be modern. And let's get this out of the way now. Whoa, I know Kung Fu. He does Whoa. know Kung Fu. That's oh, awesome. <laughs> Aww. Uh, why isn't he watching porn before he dies? Like, that's what I would do. That's what you do before you wake up. Well, yeah. I'm, uh, that's what I would do before I die, too. And now the movie's over. <laughs> Roll credits. Wow, that was a great movie. Mm -hmm. Best looking short film I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Well, when you're used to watching a bunch of shorts from UNLV, well, there you go. <laughs> John Wick, because when you light him on fire, he's going to burn everything. <laughs> now, last week, we were talking about how, like, you know, Salma Hayek is, I must stand corrected, she was actually born in 1966. She's not 50 yet, but she's getting there. Our boy Keanu here is, I'm pretty damn certain, 50 years old. He does not look it. No, he's not. I don't just mean like his body, because, you know, there's a lot of actors that age in shape, but I don't know, he just looks naturally it's from all a that, lot younger. It's you know? from all that time travel. Oh, yeah. Time travel does help with the wrinkles and the crow's feet. I was, this is just such a... No, I was, I was about to make a Michael J. Fox joke, but I won't. Never mind. Aww. <laughs> I was about to make a George Carlin joke, but I didn't. <laughs> I was gonna make I a did. Holocaust hey, joke, but I didn't. <laughs> I like how this is delivering information. It's not saying my wife died. It's you're getting exactly what happened through images. There's what almost no dialogue in, in the first, I don't know, fifteen minutes of this movie yeah, or so. It's, it's great. Yeah. And awesome because you you get a sense of exactly mm -hmm. who he is mm -hmm. without it. Hell, even when you get a bigger sense of who he is with that basement scene, mm -hmm. he doesn't say a fucking thing. Yeah. I mean, bear in mind, film is first and foremost a visual medium, so it's one of those where you kind of do want to get that across. And that's not to say, you know, sound doesn't play a part. Like, what's going on right here, definitely how it just pierces, you know, his, you know, pierces our ears, but also it's essentially piercing his soul. It's refreshing to see mm -hmm. more visual filmmaking like this in a mainstream, you know, uh, action yeah. kind of movie like this. And this is probably the best action movie I've seen since Dread. Just pure... Action. Dread is fucking amazing. Yeah. We should do a commentary for Dread. And they'll never right. do a sequel to Dread. Sadly. They just announced that. I was that if I ever win the lottery, if I become like some kind of eccentric billionaire, that's the first thing I will do. It was like, how much will it cost to make Dread Two? It'll what, be thirty million. Okay, there you go. It'll be, the check. it'll be the second thing I do after I build a Batmobile. I, <laughs> I mean, when I saw this movie. It reminded me. So I saw it fairly recently. I didn't see it in theaters, but it reminded me of. A movie I did see in theaters, kind of around the same time. Did you see the Denzel Washington Equalizer? Uh, yeah, that, uh, I knew movie. it came out around the same time. I chose to see this instead. Yeah. I went the other way. I went to see the Denzel Washington one, but it reminded me of, of it kind of reminded me of that I, movie. I a lot. have seen the Equalizer since, and I think Wick's the better movie. 
That's a tough one for me, because I like them both a lot, and the thing that reminded oh. me the same thing of both of them is e Equalizer especially. It takes a long time to set up. I think probably a little longer than, than this movie, where b before it really gets into the action. And here comes Willem the Phobian, it's, badass. Oh, yeah. No is it, is no it, Green Power Rangers mask for him in this movie. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm, and Willem the Phobian, one of my favorite actors. It's like, I can't think. Can you think of like a bad performance he's ever given? No. Even some like body of evidence, which is bad. It's, like, it's a shit. Yeah, that's a shitty movie, <laughs> but he's not bad in it. He doesn't even need to open his fucking mouth. He's, uh, it's kind of sad though. Sam Raimi, who's good for getting actors to look very creepy, and there were little moments of it in the first Spider-Man film. Unfortunately, he has to wear that. He had to cover himself yeah. up with that no. mask. Which yeah, have you ever seen that um, test footage of the very early prototype Green Goblin yes. mask? I haven't. <coughs> what does it look like? His face moves. Oh, it's really? obviously not on um, Defoe. I don't think it's on. Uh, I think one of the uh, yeah. FX guys. Oh. But it's but it's moving with the guy's face, so he's oh, able to convey emotion. Yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't go that way. Oh. I love that in the the test they gave the mask. You know that the big old chin. And I just kept thinking back to how many times Sam Raimi would make fun of Bruce Campbell's chin. <laughs> <coughs> he just gave him uh, the poster for Army of Darkness. He's yeah. like, okay, base the mask. <laughs> Off this guy. But not this fucking big and Campbell's in the background. Like, you fuck. <laughs> you know, speaking of how creepy, like, Willem Dafoe looks, it's, um, I know Nathan has seen it, but, you know, in something like the Grand Budapest Hotel, where he yeah. usually, he's in the background, he's, you know, staying there, or just how they did the makeup on him. Like, I believe he has either, like, no front teeth or something, and he's really creepy looking. Hmm. <laughs> I like to. One of the best reviews I saw of this movie was this movie is what happens when sad Keanu decides to do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> now, because you keep mentioning, and like I said, I don't know anything what's going to happen in this film. Nobody's told me anything about this. But does this film fit in with the other recent films? You know, the old guy goes and kicks ass. I don't know if I call him an old guy. Yeah, I mean, Nobody, it kind of does, but he sure as hell doesn't look old. Yeah. <laughs> it's more along the... Okay, you know how the whole thing with the Expendables, Expendables is, oh, it's this, it's this um, A-team of action stars, and they're yeah. not very good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is kind of... Um, aww. aww. And, the do and my dog just that walked so up at the exact cute. same time. Oh, now, this, this scene, I gotta say, did make me... I mean, it's emotional as sad as getting this letter from his dead wife. It made me giggle just a little. Oh, no. Because it reminded me... Dog? Oh, oh that's so cute. Look at those eyes. Mm. Uh, it reminded me there's a movie with Selma Hayek and Gerard Butler <laughs> called uh, um, I Love You, or P.S. I Love I You, love something you? like that, yeah. where he dies, Wait, who's and he's that? Gerard, uh, Gerard Butler, Butler and Hilary Swank. Oh, I thought, I thought you said Selma Hayek. Hayek. Did I say someone? Yeah. Like oh, I'm sorry. I meant, I meant Hillary Swank. I, 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 me I meant Hillary Swank. Um, but he dies, and after he's dead, he's he's sending these uh, letters to her after his death, mm -hmm. and telling her to go out in the world and you know move on without him. And I watch. I see that scene for the first time. It just makes me think back to that awful, awful movie. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I'm gonna. It, it is about. It is kind of that thing of um, the um, the the guy coming out of retirement. Yeah. It is essentially like mm -hmm. that. But it's done so well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because they they take I just they take no bullshit in getting him ready in oh. getting you on his side. The moment the inciting incident happens, you're like. Fucking kill them all. Kill every last one of those motherfuckers. A, cu a cute puppy definitely helps. I mean, yeah. you can you can, you can set up you know your characters no, and your story and have you be on the hero side. But as soon as you give them a, a, a adorable puppy, you're like, oh my god, this I I want yeah. this character. And look I at want that! Him to do everything. Look at that! Nice. What's oh. a piggyback ride? This movie is just done so well, like, and that's why it's just, as soon as it gets started, it doesn't let up on the action or the ass kicking. It oh, just yeah. fucking starts. I kind of like with the Equalizer, out. It's, it takes its time to build it. It's a, it's a <laughs> slow no. burn, but then as soon as that spark hits, it's, oh my god, it's I great. must ask Cameron, was that CGI shit? I don't know, I didn't, I, I haven't really stared at the shit that much. I'm sure it'd be cheaper just to buy, you know, novelty, Phony dog crap. poop. You left your phony dog poop. What phony dog poop? 
The dog face is people. Oh my god. <laughs> now of course now I wonder how many you know critics would watch this movie because uh, of course Keanu just got acted out by the dog. <laughs> Uh oh. Then if he, fuck critics, I don't care. Critics need a dick. <laughs> but the thing is, crit, from what I understand, critics like this movie. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got, I got good reviews. Yeah. Oh, the dog getting in the car. <laughs> this must be asked though, because I did bring this up. Keanu Reeves, good actor or bad actor? He's good, but you have to put him in the right role. Yeah. No, I, I like, like him. He has a he has a kind of quiet charm to him. I don't know. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of hard to pin like, down. Like, for example, this is 100% the right kind of role for him. Oh, yeah. No. Those, like, drama movies he was doing around, what was it, after a Speed or The Matrix, those weren't the right thing for him. Not that, you know, not that he shouldn't try drama, but he should try dramatic roles that fit him. It's like, um... Samuel L. Jackson is great in the roles that he has, mm -hmm. but if he tried to all of a sudden do Shakespeare, I'd go... I'd watch it going, what the fuck's gonna happen? I think he has Keanu, Keanu Reeves was in the Kenneth Branagh Much Ado About Nothing, and he's pretty good. He's not great, but but I like him. Oh, here's the Game of Thrones asshole coming up. Where? Right in there the in the Black Hood. Wait a minute. That I know him. It's Dickless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not Walter Peck. Well, that's what I heard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I saw. <laughs> and he's actually one of the few actors who did actually show his dick before he get, got chopped off. Sorry, Good spoilers for Spoilers for the Game of Thrones people. I'm sorry. Was, it, was it really his dick, though? That we actually saw? That they saw before no, they cut off no, no, the No, 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 no. You actually saw him in no. that sex scene, and then it's like, oh, oh there's my okay. dick. Gotcha. That's not for sale, man. I don't sell it to dickless dudes. I think that's going to end up being a lie. Jesus <laughs> call Hey, don't call him a bitch. <laughs> and in case, um, and, uh, and David, I don't know if you uh, know this, but the reason what went on right now when he said, uh, not this bitch, he, yeah. did it, he did it in Russian, revealing he knows Russian, and oh. so does he. Oh, okay. Because right now, right now we're watching it with uh, only the subtitles on, with the sound turned way down. Yeah. And I had to let that let that knowledge go because I've seen this movie. It's my copy. Love this movie. Gonna marry this movie one day. <laughs> so this is the Steven Soderbergh shot, right? <laughs> you got a little traffic going on, huh? <laughs> this movie literally has everything in it. I mean, oh, it has actually it has it has fucking badass car stuff. Watch him do the stuff in the car. <laughs> Just because he can. Oh God. I just remember him in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh, God. It's the Count. He's grown young. But the funny thing now is... Now that is a dramatic role he was not good. Yeah. <laughs> and do you know the reason why he was cast? And Francis Ford Coppola yet. even admitted to it, that the reason why he was cast was because he wanted to get younger girls, you know, into, into the, the theater. theater. Like, Wasn't hey, it look. rated R? Yeah. Oh, teenagers, you know, they only go see it. But the thing is, do you know who they passed up? Who? They passed, he passed... Push decided, you know, I think, no, no, this is what happened. He originally wanted Johnny Depp, but Johnny Depp was too busy making other movies, like mm -hmm. I believe Henry and June, uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, stuff like that. And I think if it's because, you know, if Johnny Depp was in the role, he would have done a way better job than Keanu oh, Reeves in Bobby. it. Bobby! Bobby but, wants to get on the bed! But He's very know. obedient for a brand new puppy, I gotta say. <laughs> but yeah, I could totally see Johnny Depp in that role. Yeah. And of course, that would have actually been more awkward because that was the time when he was with oh. Winona Ryder. That ended terribly. Uh, you know, with that Wino, Winona Forever tattoo, which got changed to Wino Forever. And it ended with uh, Winona oh, Ryder oh. chopping off Johnny Depp's head. You know, yeah. Typical, typical Dracula type story. Yeah. And ultimately ended up with uh, him with Amber Heard. Spoilers. Oh, ouch. That wasn't very kind. There's no way this could end badly for these guys. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, are they beating him up sp specifically because he was a dick to them? Or were they like... I think they're... they're were they're, they casing him out beforehand and that's why they saw him at the gas station? No, I think they're beating, they're, they're beating up to, take, to, to steal the car. Yeah. Oh no. They're not... Did he fucking kill the dog? Yeah! yeah. You motherfucker! And then, um, and if you would ask me, they were the dicks to him. 
Well, yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I, 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 I was never quite sure if they met up at the gas oh, no. station because they were KC to mount, or if it, it was, was just a coincidence. It was just, a, it was just a coincidence because, um, okay. I, I can't say because David hadn't seen it, but they kind of reveal it was a coincidence. God and this is the end of the movie. <laughs> oh, but wait, they're not done with what happened to the dog. Because look what happened. The dog still walked up Aww. to be with him. And John Leguizamo was going to show up soon. That's right. Know, with, a, with a really great cameo kind of role. It's just a cameo? Yeah, but it's he's. there's nobody who's bad in this it's, movie. It's kind of an extended no. cameo. But it's no, an extended cameo. No, I'm not complaining because I love me some John Leguizamo. I think he's, he's, the best part of, he's the best part about the about that shitty Spawn movie. He's the best part about Pest, even though he hates that movie. Who's the best part about Super Mario Brothers? Or is he? I think that might go to Dennis Hopper. <laughs> that might go to... That might go to um, absolutely nothing. Bob. <laughs> now, I'll freely admit that The Pest, that's a movie... You know, like one of those, like, the, you know, the really bad movies that oh, people hate, but you openly admit you like them? Now the dog's yeah. collar is next to his wife's bracelet. Uh-oh. So yeah, that's that's what I thought was really awesome about this movie when I'm watching it. I'm like, like we said, it, it, it kind of takes that same sort of story where oh he comes out of retirement to get revenge or to do whatever. And it starts out like that, but usually with you know other action movies, it's oh they killed my wife or oh my god they killed my old partner, my best friend. Like this movie, it's they killed my fucking puppy. I'm gonna destroy all these motherfuckers. And all that they got they got him on the worst possible. Day exactly. Them. That's what I love. It's just so, uh, something oh, that you that you don't look, normally look put at, in action. Look at Lucas like almost face. Look at when it com comes back to him. The look on his face when he sees the car. To lose the truck. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a Liguizamo fan, but I like him in roles like this, yeah. like really you know, oh, smaller, right simpler there. kind of roles. That look in his face. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> that wasn't very kind. I'm gonna be saying that throughout the movie, right? <laughs> Does like oh, it's it's things are gonna go. Cr oh, this this is like the ultimate steam blow off movie where you, <laughs> where you, there are times where you just want to scream and then you watch him go to work. You know, it's sort of like it's for some reason this is just I don't know why it popped into my head, but it's kind of reminded me of the gray. As well, you know, that great, you know, Liam Neeson film. The I mean, just, is amazing. Yeah. But you can fight a wolf. Oh, God, yeah. Well, when we, when we get to the gray, we'll talk about that. But, I mean, just in terms of, you know, older... <clears throat> oh, I do apologize. Oh, that was Old, amazing. Older character, you know, going and doing that thing with the dead wife, what have oh, you. Do you remember that? Yeah. It's Now we're going to see what happened. Oh. He, he, you can... He literally has the face of, I just shit my pants. Yeah. He is, uh, this... I think the guy who did this is a first-time director, or at least something this big. It's Beagle! Oh. I love that. That's... Th that's what I would tell these certain actors, just to... It's like... By just conveying with oh, a look. Now we just pissed off Leguizamo. Now we just pissed off Aurelio. <laughs> Do you know who was uh, originally supposed to be in the gray? Who? It was Bradley Cooper. As the Liam Neeson part? As the Liam Neeson no, part, No, one of So it didn't originally have that kind of, you know, older character, you mm. know, doing that kind of stuff. But I it kind of became that once they, once they got Liam Neeson. But it's like with... I'm glad... Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> oh, God. Like, yeah. And just like in Game of Thrones, he's getting the fuck mm -hmm. beat out of him. <laughs> he's really typecast as yeah. the guy who gets the fuck beat out of him. What yeah. can you say? Oh, God. <laughs> this is so good. Once See, again, you're going to be saying that, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this is so good a lot. It's, it's one of those where it's like, we talk about like the little moments that happens yeah. in mm -hmm. films. Like what makes, you know, good films really good or great or what have you. And when you cast really good actors, like, bear in mind, this is a guy who, of course, he jokingly said when he went to audition to be a part of the actor's studio, Lee Strasberg was there, and the next day Lee Strasberg died. Because <laughs> he was that yeah. good. <laughs> but it's just, you can definitely tell with 
with Leguizamo that he definitely will bring, in my opinion, would bring his A game to what have you, whether it's being really over the top yeah. or <laughs> something like this. God, you, see, this is exactly the kind of movie, movie that Keanu is perfect for because he doesn't need to go all out because him doing so little mm. translates into more than anything could, what anyone could say. Just like this movie doesn't need huge lines of exposition. You just see it. Oh, this is great. This is a great sequence. <laughs> oh, no shit. <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> it's oh my god. This movie does that badass comeback thing so well. Now, can you imagine this in a lesser screenwriter's hands? Or uh, they would just basically be like, "What he did? Oh no! What are we gonna do? We gotta do this. We gotta do that." Instead, it's just a simple, "Oh, mm. oh shit!" Look on the face. Oh no! Like, like all you have to do is put those two letters, and you know you get the right actor, and he'll yeah pull it off perfectly. And he did. Who else is? What else has this guy been in? I know he I've looks seen really him familiar. so many times before. This, however, is Dean Winters mm. of Oz fame, and uh, really, I mainly know he's ma- he's he's the mayhem. He's the mayhem guy. Yeah. You know. Oh, is he in those those car commercials? He's the yeah, car he's commercial. mayhem. I know him from Oz as um, he got God, one of the O'Reilly brothers, and also oh. SVU. Does he yeah. get? Oh yeah 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 yeah. He's, he, SVU too. he's yeah. in the first season, and he was also in the. Later, see, didn't he play Lenny Briscoe's son? Is that him? I don't remember. <clears throat> oh, jeez. David's oh, on a roll tonight. Like, whoa, 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 we didn't need to see that shot of Dickless there. Uh-uh. Oh, we're gonna... We're, oh, uh, look how fucking cool he is. Yeah. God, this is all such... Gr- I, that's the thing. I think this builds up you wanting to see um, the, the uh, protagonist kick ass more than mm-hmm. the Equalizer does. <laughs> Just because... It's so slow, and people know exactly who John Wick is. There's another, another thing I just want to also point out, and that is the, uh, I've mentioned this before, but the importance of production design. I'm taking a look at this, and it's, I do like how it's built up, where it's like, it's, you know, nice and clean here, mm-hmm. but it's also very gothic as and, well. It does give this idea of, if this was Count Dracula nowadays, that's what he would probably be doing. Another another great thing about this movie is how many times you go, holy shit, they're in this movie. <laughs> there he is, getting the getting the fuck beat out of him again, which wasn't very kind. <laughs> could have been worse. He could have cut off his dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then and we're recording this, and Game of Thrones season five is coming up. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, you guys. Yeah. I haven't watched past season two. I haven't cut up yet. Oh really? Oh shit! Then I just spoiled it. My feet. My feet. No, I already knew. It's, I really, it's, okay, okay. It's one of those shows where even if you where, know the spoiler, you're like, I need to see how it happens. Yeah. Okay. When, and whenever okay. I go on, when the season's going on, whenever something comes online, like, can you believe what happens on Game yeah. of Thrones? I'll immediately look at look yeah. it up and be like, okay, so that happens. <laughs> oh, <laughs> even the a... even the red wedding. Mm-hmm. No. Oh god! When you get to the red wedding, I is, immediately looked it up on YouTube. And that was like, is the, okay, so it, that but happens. in the context, it's one of the most heartbreaking <laughs> things you'll we'll ever see. This is such a great sequence. I want that suit. <laughs> Which one? I want them both. They both look good. I want that booze. It looks like they're doing a vodka commercial right now. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta look this guy up because I know I've yep. seen him enough. I don't stuff. always beat up my son, but when I do. Oh, I do because of John Wick. You gotta, you gotta watch how he describes Wick. It's yeah. so great. Oh, God. Dun dun dun! <laughs> oh, oh, this is put together so oh, fucking so well. Oh God, I love that reveal. <laughs> the sledgehammer. That's good. <laughs> oh, this movie. So and even nice. then, is if he didn't say anything else, that's perfect. John Wick drinks it down. Now here comes the exposition, but it's good exposition. Yeah. Well, you need it, though, yeah. at this point. And it's it's nice, also a bit of editing. Bobby Yaga means the boogeyman. But it's also, also a good <coughs> bit of editing here, though. Yeah. John Wick wasn't next technically the boogeyman. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> now, why the hell didn't they get him to go after Michael Myers? <laughs> he was already dead at this point. For years... Now, this is all on good, but they should have oh, shot this in front of a okay. green screen. He was... Okay, now I know who he is. Oh, he is was he? in um, the original, the Swedish um, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh! 
Which is infinitely better than the American version. Can, and I'll, and I'll every, leave it at that. In every single way possible. Yes. Even the score? And he was also the bad guy in um, the, the last Mission Impossible movie. Yeah. So now I know, yeah. You know, for some reason, I was going to say he was the landlord in Spider-Man 2. For a brief second, but then I knew it wasn't him. <laughs> it was a very brief segment. Oh, here segment. comes the badass deal that was made. To task the impossible task. <laughs> no, that was vodka to be good. <laughs> yeah. I recommend everyone in the bachelor party do not drink straight up vodka or you'll be gone. These guys know for a fact that's what happened to me. Uh, yeah. First hand accounts. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do that for you, Nathan. Hell no. I'd like to remember my bachelor. Oh, I remember it. Just when <laughs> you part. remember flashes. <laughs> oh God. Unkill his dog. <laughs> I'm gonna get him a new one. Put a bow on it. It would be adorable. <laughs> <laughs> You're the fucked up. <laughs> I'm getting an Eastern Promises vibe a little bit. Just attack. I mean, I mean, in a good way, because I love that movie. It's, it's actually the ex uh, very, very similar story to Road to Perdition, hmm. but just replace the mother and uh, young son with a cute beagle. With a cute beagle. <laughs> <laughs> fucked up Snoopy. And I also, I just love what it puts like, there with like the gold opening up the treasure chest. It's, it's a good little motif. I like that. Well, apparently John Wick used to be a pirate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He didn't just have one case of weapons over there. He had multiple cases. Yeah, he's ready to fuck someone's shit up. I'm gonna load my shotgun with gold doubloons. Yeah. He's badass enough to try that. Seems to be a better happenstance, Mr. Bond. I like to think even as, as soon as the name John Wick was mentioned, he knew he was dead. <laughs> like, that's the kind of thing John See, Wick you, is. You, 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 you mention his name, and you're like, oh, well, yeah, well, that's over. You'd think he would have called John Wick and been like, okay, so I know what happened. My son's going to be at this place at this time. Just yeah. don't come after me, please. Like, <laughs> Because, hey, um, I can always have another son. <laughs> One that I can, you know, raise to not be such a fuck up. Exactly. And someone's gonna stay here while everyone else got up. I gotta throw away all my wing bones. Yeah, I'm back, I'm back. Oh, and now, oh, uh, put it in the box, it's fine. Oop, Keanu shower scene. Oh, no, now, speaking that. of asses, Keanu Reeves, does he have a nice ass? I've never really seen it. I've seen it in Devil's Advocate. Well, what do you oh, think of it? That's right. Yeah, it's a nice ass. Nice male ass. It's not George Clooney ass. That is an ass. And now he's singing something very creepily in Russian. Rushbodoich. Which always makes somebody seem way more badass than they already are. Just for a guy who's <laughs> already a badass, holy shit. And he's all dressed in black, because this isn't just a this isn't just a job, this is a fucking funeral march. And oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Now how 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 long have we been watching this movie? What's the what's the time stamp? It feels today? like it's only been five minutes. Uh -huh. <laughs> it really does. I'm curious because this is the first time we're gonna see like we're gonna see the action start. I and it's been what like twenty minutes, but it's all it's all been building up and it's been building up really and well. It, yeah, it's paced, which movies don't do nowadays. It's paced so amazingly well and oh, this is good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be so good, David. It's gonna be so good. Yeah, I'm more, more. <laughs> Even even my dog's excited. It's vengeance. No, because I do like the the build up to it. Because as Nathan pointed out, I mean one of my main issues with the Michael Bay film is that you get so much shit thrown at you and cut cut mm -hmm. cut 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 yeah. that you need that that time to breathe and you don't get it. In this case, you build up, build up, and oh. up to this. Yes, yes. Oh. Boom, headshot! It's perfect because he has an all-white house, too, so the blood going everywhere is just... And he's all <laughs> dressed in black. Funeral march. He's the dead man, the Undertaker. 
You see, going back to production design, I mean, that's perfect, where it's sort of like he's hiding oh. his true self in this, you know, angelic, heavenly white house. Now it's become black and dark. See, I, see, like I told you he knows kung fu. <laughs> From that angle, it looks like he shot him in the ass. <laughs> that's probably where his brain was. <laughs> oh, God, this is... Uh... I've seen this twice now, and I still... I'm like, yay! Now, why wasn't he a woman? Why wasn't who a woman? John, John Wick. Wick. Why couldn't it be Juanita Wick? I can't... Juanita I, you know, Wick. <laughs> there's, there's, actually a oh, real, there's actually a real answer to that, but I don't want to spoil the movie anymore for you. Okay. No, no, screw it. There's already a badass woman in this movie. And she's play, and she is played by Adrian Pilecki. Padlicky, I can't pronounce her last name. I've she was on Friday no Night. Idea. She's on Friday Night Lights Friday Night and Lights. Agents, Agents of Shield. A Wonder Woman. Yeah, the, <laughs> the would be Wonder Woman. Break his fucking neck! Break his fucking neck! Break his fucking neck! <laughs> but yeah, she plays yeah. the break his neck. That hardwood floor just makes it that much more yeah. painful. Oh, oh broke that. his fucking neck! Oh. Broke his fucking neck! Stab him parts. in the dick! Stab him in the dick! <laughs> Stab him in the dick! No, stab him in the dick. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, the gameplay for that new game, The Order eighteen? I have heard nothing but bad things about this. So have I. But there's specifically dick punches in that game. Of course. Like when you when you're fighting a guy, you can either punch him in the face or punch him in the dick. And I was like, well, now there's a plus. <laughs> Movie, can you be even more badass than you already are? There we go. Fuck. I love that. It's great. But yeah, Adrian Pedalecki, uh, she is a really awesome badass. She can punch me in the dick anytime she wants. Yes, you can. <laughs> she already has. Oh, this is a great scene. I love scene. that, this, I love this that is great. lighting. Oh, I love that lighting. You know, this is a great little bit of dialogue coming up. This is awesome. Because everyone knows John Wick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> See, give him the give him the right part, give him a good script, and he he pulls oh, it off perfectly. That was awesome. This is. This is a this is a movie where I honestly think everything is perfect in this movie. <laughs> There's not a point where they fuck up. They even make you think they might fuck up. I'm like, just fucking with you. <laughs> oh, and coming up coming up next is the one of the best concepts I've ever seen in any um, action movie. Oh, the dinner <laughs> reservations though. No, 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 no that but the ho the hotel. Oh, the hotel part. Oh yeah, yeah. the hotel's great. And I'm still sitting here going, what hotel? What dinner reservation? I want to know. This is what a dinner reservation is. <laughs> and um, that guy, it took me a while to figure out who he is. Then I realized he's the guy who played um, Tintin and the Crow. He's um, Ben Horn's brother on Twin Peaks. Oh! I can't remember what else he's been in, but he's been in a lot of stuff. Look he's he's, 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 one, he's one of those actors where you've seen them everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A character actor, if you will. Yeah. I love how the truck says waste disposal, too. <laughs> I just love all the talking and code they do. Dinner for 12. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah. Those are <laughs> jam. Oh, look, look at his teeth. <laughs> you see his teeth? He yeah. didn't have them. Ah. Uh. <laughs> but they're not going to get a proper funeral. They don't deserve one. They're supporting dog killers. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I 
I'm the right-hand man to an evil mobster. But when John Wick comes to town and you don't have the right car insurance, shit's gonna go down. You can prevent mayhem like John Wick. If it dies, it dies. <laughs> I must break you. Why didn't they cast off one grin? Come on. I think they made up for for who they cast as one of the bodyguards <laughs> of that club. I think David's going to recognize him right away. Is it the big guy from uh, Game of Thrones? No. <laughs> yeah, when I say I, I mean you will recognize him. Is it John C. Riley? No, it's not John C. Riley. <laughs> Just wait until you see who it is. Is it Carrie Fisher? It yes, it's Carrie Fisher. Yay! <laughs> Oh, come on, that's healthy. There's no vodka in it. I do not drink. <laughs> vodka healthy. Potatoes. In <laughs> Soviet Russia, John Wick fuck you up! Would you kill John Wick for two million dollars? Fuck you. Two million five. Get the fuck out of my house. Consider it done. And I do mean done. I ain't doing it. Fuck you. <laughs> you didn't drink it. Maybe if you had drank when I made you, I would have actually tried to kill him. <laughs> oh, what a lovely city. Oh, Let's all move there. Nah. Too expensive. There's state, in, there's state income tax. Fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah. Love Nevada. <laughs> you know, one day I did think about moving to Chicago or Boston, but then it's like, too expensive. Especially Massachusetts. Holy shit. Ugh. Lovely Plus, city. Plus, you know, there's all those Boston people there. <laughs> they were wonderful when I met them <laughs> in Chicago. The only thing worse is people from Springfield. <laughs> hey, don't, no, hey, don't bring Brad into this. I thought you were from Springfield, too. Oh. <laughs> well, at least I wasn't born in a racist state. You mean any place in the U.S.? <laughs> oh. Ooh, ouch. America burn. <laughs> yeah. You anti-American bastard. <laughs> Why don't you go back to Russia with the commies? <laughs> they do have pretty hot women. Who will do anything for a loaf of bread. <laughs> Oh, this is a cool part. This is really cool. <laughs> I'm actually surprised. I've never heard this the, this particular concept of hotel in any movie before this. It might be, but I've never heard of it before. What's that? I'll just tell you. The hotel is exclusively for hitmen. Oh. I mean, I... It's, it's exclusively for assassins. There has to be another... Something like that. Like a, like a narrative, be it a book, film, television. There has to have been something like that done, but... That, that is, that, I do like that. It's a good idea. The closest thing I can think of off the top of my head is in Wanted, where the whole warehouse yeah. that they work and everything is all like a cover for their assassin, assassin organization. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of the closest thing I can think of, and it's not quite the same. Good seeing you again, John. Mm-mm. Mm. -mm. mm. Camille. And they all know each other. I love the I love this guy too. I, yeah. can, I don't know his name, but he was in Lost and Fringe and a bunch of other things. You think he was really in, good. I think he's another of those guys that was in Oz too. How much butt fucking is in this film? Wait, what? Where well, did that Oz, come from? Oz featured a lot of butt fucking, did it not? There's there's no butt fucking in this movie. Okay. Maybe the director was just a fan well, of we, the butt fucking. Yeah, because, like, like, maybe those actors because, are like, that Law, or, Law and Order and Oz have like a lot of like <laughs> actor crossover. There's yeah. a, there's um Ryan O'Reilly who's Dean Winters. There's Christopher Maloney who was a uh, Keller. Oh, and don't forget the big one because he just won an Oscar. J.K. Simmons. Simmons. Oh yeah, J.K. Simmons. Yeah, he was, but he, he, he was, was like a guest star a couple times though. for Law and Order. Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. was, but still. I really hope but, that. But I when really... you think of it, every actor who's in the profession has been on Law and Order in yeah. some in some yeah. form or another. Yeah. My personal favorite was like recently was watching Viola Davis 
on Law and Order where she played one of the defense attorneys. Mm -hmm. And I just would watch her. I'm thinking, she's going to be really big one of these days in a small little role. It's fun to watch an old rerun of Law and Order oh, and yeah. see someone. I just, not that long ago, I saw, oh shit, what's her name? From Star Trek and Avatar. Uh, oh, Zoe uh, Saldana. Zoe Saldana yeah, was yeah. in it. And I'm like, yeah. oh my god, it's fucking Uhura. Awesome. <laughs> it's like or another back one when no one knew who Amanda she was. Amanda is one of them. Or you mm -hmm. see like Laura Linney, one of the old ones, or Philip mm -hmm. Seymour Hoffman, or here comes you know Samuel Jackson. Who, I remember watching yeah. Wander SVU and I saw um, Jim Gaffigan as a child molester. On oh, yeah, that was funny. he plays a clown. Yeah, the guy dressed up like a clown. <laughs> didn't Stephen Colbert in one of the Law and Order ones? Did he play? He was in, in Criminal Intent, the one with, I think, with a uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. yeah, and Vincent D'Onofrio is now going to be the kingpin. Or he really? is the kingpin. On in, the, the, in the Netflix? Netflix Daredevil show, he's oh, the kingpin. I didn't know that. Yeah. And on that subject, since we're also talking about um, J.K. Simmons earlier and we moved to Marvel, I have said <laughs> when Spider-Man comes back to Marvel in his own movie, there's nobody else who should be J. Jonah Jameson except J.K. Simmons. Yeah, but they can't afford him now because he's an Oscar winner. Yeah, hey, they'll, get, they'll get him. <laughs> they'll get him. Because that's exactly how Age of Ultron should end. You'd a big the J.K. Simmons cameo. Yeah, a big, <laughs> expensive-looking desk. You know, it's it's worn, but it's expensive. It's paper scattered on it, and then you hear you hear a very familiar voice going, "Avengers, freaks! Hope they're not as bad as that web-headed menace." And then he turns around and it's like, "Parker, give me photos of Ultron now." Yeah, wait, is it? <laughs> Holy fucking yeah. shit! Ian McFucking Shane's in this goddamn thing. <laughs> yep. Fuck I told you, yeah. this is the movie where you go, holy shit, he's in this movie? Holy <laughs> shit, she's in this movie? Now, to those who don't know who E. McShane is, uh, that's kind of sad, but he is one of our, you know, definitely great actors. I love the guy. Seen him, like, even from, from Deadwood, even, like, a little small role in American Horror Story. He is fucking great. <laughs> I really liked him in, um, as, as... Mediocre and not very good as the movie was. Oh, the last uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah, him Black in it yeah. is great. Blackbeard, yeah. We're all just being quiet so we can listen do to not, Ian yeah. okay. talk. Do not talk about <laughs> chewing anything down to the bone about with somebody whose dog's just been murdered. Yeah. <laughs> You're just going to piss him off even more. But he can get away with it because it's Ian McFucking Shane. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying that Wick's yeah. going to snap at him. Yeah. You're just putting pouring fuel on the fire for him wanting to get the people who did it. <laughs> In a world. You know, this actually is a very beautiful looking movie. Yeah. The use of color and such, I really do. Because uh, that's the one thing... That I, for some action films, we mentioned oh. Dread, but I just love the use of color in both <laughs> movies and how it's actually, you're, you're using the camera and oh. such and, to um, tell the story the, very I, well. And I don't know if, you, if uh, you, you caught it, but they're kind of explaining it again right now. The Continental has rules where assassins cannot attack each other or do hits mm -hmm. on these premises. Yeah, there's, especially in this scene, and there's a big action scene later on talking about color. It's just, it's very diverse. Mm -hmm. And there's like all these... You know, there's, there's, and here there's, you got, you got the mostly red and yellow, but then you turn the camera, you got the green on yeah. one side, you still got the red, you got him in all black. It's green because he's hulking out. When, when he was, when he's walking through, you had a lot of blues in there too. It was great. You, you never see that in, in movies nowadays. It's all just gritty, dark grays and browns and shit, and it's disgusting. Yeah. But this is, this is beautiful. And I, I think just for, for me personally, I mean, the, the one film that made me pay attention to color, start off when I was a kid, was The Empire Strikes Back, because I vividly remember the use of colors, like what Hoth looked like, Dagobah, when they were on the Millennium Falcon, the Cloud City, especially when they're in the carbonite freezing chamber. I remember all the color. For me, it was Castle story. Blanca. You ass. <laughs> Why did you watch the Ted Turner version? Like, yeehaw, we're gonna colorize that some bitch. <laughs> Give me my Crayolas. <laughs> she could have been a good Wonder Woman in the right. In the it right is hand. Is have you ever seen that I pilot? No, I, I it's really awful. want to. It's awful. Oh, really? Yeah. I've always wanted to watch she's it. She's in both Wonder Woman costumes, the one with the pants and the classic one. Mm. <laughs> and that's not a bad view. Yeah, now we going back to the usage of color. Yeah, now, now we got now we got the blues and the pinks and red. Yeah. Am I also getting a drive vibe as well? Anyone? It's kind of there, but yeah. and I mean that positively. But there's a lot more going on. Yeah. Well, I love drive. me. Well, I love me. So no, drive. drive's, drive's good. Yeah. yeah. 
I love me some Drive. I think I might actually like this movie better. Though. Oh, I loved I loved Drive, but oh no, I'm not, movie. I'm not, no, no, I'm not. No. His follow-up movie was shit, though. The I haven't seen it. I really want to. Because Something that has God in the title. Oh God. Only God forgives. Only want, God forgives. I want to because no, everyone. Not. No, because everybody hates it. No, check it out. I no, no, like, but it's it's not. Okay, a, like, it's so awful. You have to see it Wild Wild West kind of way or fun kind of way. It's just flat no, out I, shit. I check it out. I check right. it out because there's some I moments in it that do remind me of Wild at Heart. A I couple mean, moments. Oh. Look at that use of color. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of great asses. <laughs> Um, and also, here comes the cameo I was telling you about. He's going to be coming up pretty soon. And it is a he, David. I think oh. you'll be able to recognize him as... Hey, hey, no shoes in the pool, lady. You bitch. That's very dangerous. <laughs> is this the cameo? No, he's... I'll tell you, though. The person, oh, I'm talking about, the person I'm talking about plays a bodyguard. Okay. Dickless, you can't I do would totally go it. to that club and then hate it as soon as I got in. Because I hate <laughs> clubs. But I would still go there. But, isn't that funny, though? Because you want to go and meet people, but where are the people going? The goddamn clubs. I hate you, clubs. You fucking hate... I'm not a big fan of clubs. Nathan, you like clubs? Not especially, no. Okay, here it, he comes. It depends. If I'm getting waste-ass drunk, then I'll go to a club. Okay. Oh, you're going to spot him. Ron, Ron Perlman? No, it's Kevin Nash! Yeah, it's <laughs> Kevin Nash. What? Goddamn Diesel doesn't open the door for anybody. <laughs> He does in movies. So when he opened the door... He does for John Wick. When he yeah. when he, when, when <laughs> oh, he, look, and now we mentioned Lita. Yeah. Now, when he opened the door, did he tear his quad? <laughs> no, but that's the thing. If John Wick wants to take him out, he just tear his quad. Who would win in the fight? Uh, Kevin Nash's quad or Triple H's quad? Uh, oh, fuck. Triple H because it's younger? I don't know. I think Triple H has torn both his quads. Though. Yeah. I love even the people who are supposed to protect him are like, yeah. you're a fucking douche. They're like, like, do you re- it's like, do you realize what you did to us? <laughs> do you have any fucking clue how screwed we are right now? Yeah, even Tom Hardy isn't happy. Oh, Tom Hardy be so good in this movie. <laughs> you should be in John Wick 2. No, don't kill Diesel. His, His name is Francis. Francis. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Luik. Now, is that... Did he learn Russian? Was that from his role in The Punisher? Wouldn't it be weird if that was just something random about Kevin Nash, like he speaks fluent Russian? That'd be awesome. <laughs> that just... I like that, that his name is Francis, but he's the grown-up version of the guy from Pee-wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> grown-up. And John Wick was Pee-wee's real name. <laughs> I can't believe I thought it was Ron Perlman at first, but... <laughs> Ron Perlman should be in the sequel. Ron Perlman should be in every movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's who I wanted. In oh, the new you know, sto- you new know, Star Wars films. I want Ron Perlman. You know what? You know what yeah. I would have liked to see Ron Perlman as Odin instead of uh, Anthony Hopkins. That would have been interesting. Mm, I don't know. I love. I love me some Anthony Hopkins. Oh, that was an awesome kill. <laughs> hey. No, that was a very kind. What kind of name is Losef? I think it's supposed to be Yosef. 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 Losef, we're in the emergency time to call it twin crawl. Because that's the thing, is that supposed to be a capitalized I? That's the... I, it, it, no, it has is to, it? it is supposed to be a capitalized I. Oh, I guess I. it is, yeah. So it's Yosef. But in the alphabet, Jehovah begins with an I. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and, then, and then, J. Oh, that has to be a shitty way of drowning in such a shallow <laughs> fucking pool. Yeah, because you're tempted to breathe. It's right there. You got my cufflink wet. God damn. Damn you it, killed, my fucking watch. You killed my dog and got my phone wet. <laughs> now I have to go get fucking rice. And that <laughs> shit doesn't work half the time. Actually, I think it's I think it's uh, superstition that rice does that. I, I There are so many people that I know who decide, give me the rice. Because um, I know it started from um, putting rice in... Um, popcorn salt or powdered salt to keep them coming up together, but what the rice is really there to do is to keep the surface tension yeah. at a certain oh. degree so it doesn't lump up in the ball. It's gorgeous. It has very little to do with absorbing water. It has everything to do with uh, disrupting the uh, surface Why the tension. fuck are we talking about yeah, rice, we got <laughs> rice and wet phones? Because we can't <laughs> criticize this movie. It's too good. No, it is. No, we can't. We can't criticize. Positively criticize. 
Oh, that was a good shot. I don't like the fonts they use. Yeah, like, okay, fuck okay. The font. Yeah, fuck that the font. font. Actually, that oh, is stupid. That is true. I'm not a big fan of the font. I have to admit. Oh, God. I ha- oh. oh, right in the chin. I do have oh. to admit, if there's one little criticism, it's the font. But when you begin to think about it, are you, it's like, can you imagine somebody go, well, I like the movie, but the font, eh, thumbs down. And you just go, the font negates every single thing you liked about the movie? Oh, uh, Cal Calgary. Oh, yeah. I need to tell actually, you a story about Actually, that there fucker. is something I really don't like about this movie. It's coming up soon. I'll, I'll, I'll mention it when it comes up. But the, there, there is one big criticism I do have for this movie. That's, that's coming up really oh, soon. Not enough Keanu Reeves boner? Well, that's it. Ooh. You might also like about the action. You can actually see what's going on. Yes. Yeah. It's not all no, fucking no, shaky no, cam. No, yeah, no shit. shaky cam, born identity fucking bullshit. Which is funny because I, Which, like, uh, the I like the first one's good. Films. The first one's good. Oh, yeah. I can't watch the other Oh, I love it how he did it. He's just like, bam. Uh, you see, I love you. You can see the smoke coming yeah. out from his face. I don't know. It's like I love me the other born films. Well, except the... Oh, God, what was the last one called? <laughs> Ultimate. Oh, Legacy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes! Jeez. Okay, here's what I don't like. I, 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 I get that he was using a human shield, but this part. Through the entire movie, we see that he's an absolute perfect shot. Run, Dickless! And now he's firing, like, six times at this guy and doesn't hit him once? That's the one thing that I'm like, wait a minute. Well, I Like, s- he's been, you know... Perfect with every shot through this entire movie until but those, a lot of those were, he has to kill were, the one that he a lot of those, even those actually were, even, wants to yeah, kill. Yeah, but a lot of those, even though they were moving targets, yeah. were point blank. That, actually, I got, I got. Yeah, one. but still, I don't know. It just, it just yeah. caught me as a. Yeah, wait a minute! Isn't this guy supposed to be perfect killer? I do have. I, I do can't have get the one guy. I do have a foul rebuttal, and that's this. He's a rat. Dickless is a rat, and the thing is about a goddamn rat. Those fuckers are really hard to kill. They're always running those little sons I mean, of I, I understand if he had yeah. killed them, the movie would be over, and it yeah. can't be over well, this it's, soon. It's but still, how it's... many times do you have you willing to bet that Dickless has run away from being shot? <laughs> so he's just really good yeah. at running away yeah. from being shot. Look, go, at all, uh, look at all the different colors they have in this yeah. one scene. It keeps changing, like the entire palette. It's great. And there's there, Kevin Euclid. Actually, I thought that was actually Rasputin. <laughs> I'm Rasputin! <laughs> oh, fucking love it. It's great. Now we were talking earlier about it was either the director or the co-director is a stuntman. Oh, I love stuntman. that. Where he's like, oh, out of bullets. Still, fuck you. And I, I, I think, I think stuntmen can make really good action movie directors because they probably have really great ideas mm-hmm. for action sequences and stuff that they've never been able to use in a movie before. So they get to this point where they get to direct a film. They're like, let's just put all this shit we've always yeah. wanted to do. Into a movie because we know we can do it and it'll look awesome. Just don't and they make- come up with all this. <laughs> stuff. Look at that, it's great. Just, just don't make them do comedy. <coughs> Hell, need them. <coughs> the other thing is that almost looks like the RoboCop gun. <laughs> it, oh it god, that's does. a good point. Oh, and the purple. We got some oh. purple. I mean, this is how you can do it. It's like because it's visually engaging, and it's the it's not shaking. You can see yeah. everything he's yeah. you doing. You can tell it's handheld because it's because yeah. it's yeah, it's moving to what you need to see, but it's not constantly but the, rattling. But the DP isn't having a fucking seizure. Who's the DP on this? I don't know. Oh, I can't wait till like the credits and I can see who the DP is. I'll have to give him like, woo, standing Let's ovation. Look it up now. Oh, Ooh. die, Rasputin! <laughs> you've been, you've been, you've been got, oh wait, no, you've mind. been stabbed, bludgeoned. Hung and all that, but you've never been Keanu'd. <laughs> ah. God. Boom, headshot. <laughs> Justin, okay, Justin okay. Verlander is pissed. Okay, this okay, this brings up, when, to me, uh, I talked about this with people once. Is there a difference between action movies and adventure movies? Because I th- um, I, think I think Indiana Jones yeah. has some good action scenes. But that's an adventure movie. Well, those are adventure but it's movies. more of an adventure yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is an action movie. Yeah. It goes in an adventure, but this is action. Well, because I think it's like with, with adventure, because there are going to oh. be, uh, when I see it, it's like, yeah, there's going to be action, but then when there's adventure, it's like there's some clues to f- solve, and we have to find this to go do that and put this together. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be bang, bang, shoot him up, here come the explosions. God, Justin Ferlander is kicking his ass. Oh, that sort of thing. And that's a, that's another thing I like about this kind of action movie. It's a it's die hard at type in a way where because the uh, main the main oh, hero the he gets fucked up. It's interesting you should say that because I just looked up the cinematographer. Uh-huh. His name is Jonathan Sela. Also did cinematography. Oh, John Seal. 
No, Jonathan Sala. Oh, okay. And he did cinematography for. Oh, here a comes good the here comes the hard. fu. Oh. Ooh. Now, now that's, that, that's a good example because Good Day. That's that was he another did good Russian. Day die hard. He Russian did a Law Abiding Citizen, uh-huh. the Max Payne feature film, uh-huh. Midnight Meat Train. So, oh, okay. So aside uh, from the, Mid- the Omen remake, which is a really beautiful looking movie, I like that one a lot. So, and, oh, and oh, and the classic, the classic Soul Plane. Oh, oh God! <laughs> I am so glad he has come it. so far. <laughs> oh, again, I like that good yeah. callback. Everything's got a price. Yep. Yeah. Money, 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 money. I still, I'd hire, I'd hire him for movies. I, in fact, I just oh, hire yeah. him not yeah. just, not just when it comes to action films, just like any kind of film. I bet you he'd, like, come on, he shot a goddamn Soul Plane, so you know he'll be able to do anything. Yeah, <laughs> and he's willing to do anything. Yeah, <laughs> except porn. <laughs> well, once you do porn, you're kind of in the dog. dog yes. Not if you establish yourself as, you know, doing movies like John and Wick before you go into porn. Yeah. Then you can come back out of it and yeah. do mainstream movies again. Yeah. I love these conversations. They're so great. Yeah. <laughs> God, this movie's so good. I'm sorry I got blood all over your coffee. I'm sorry I ruined your panther party. <laughs> oh God! Forrest Gump as a as a as an assassin. I'm not a smart man, but I know, but I how, know what hit men do. I'm not a smart man, but I know how to field strip a rifle in under five minutes. <laughs> I must have killed me about fifteen motherfuckers. I must have killed me about fifteen people. Same amount of Dr Pepper I drink. <laughs> Isn't that the key master, the key gatekeeper, whatever from uh, Matrix <laughs> Reloaded? Oh, the key maker? The key maker. Might be. I don't think so. Yeah, I know, it's not. I can't. I'm Are stereotyping. You... Well, now that you've said it, I want to know. It's not. Even... It's not. I'll look it up. I already got my phone out. Yeah, it's, it's all good. Even... God, this is... I actually became as fast. I became obsessed with that keymaker character for Matrix Reloaded. I was. He I has wanted, a great voice. <laughs> I wanted to play him because I'd be like, like this. <laughs> I'm the keymaker. Oh my yes. Well, I'm going to make your keys. Yes, come here, Neo. Ooh. So you play him as Ed Wynn? Oh my goodness! I'm the keymaker. <laughs> oh my my yes yes oh that. <laughs> yes yes. I'm Holy shit! It is the keymaker. It is? It is. <laughs> That's a key maker. That was the key maker. That was the key maker? I just looked it up, yep. <laughs> Randall Duck Kim. <laughs> All right. That's hey, awesome. hey, you can't do that. You might be outside the premises, but it still counts. You can't do that. They'd have to prove it was him. Unless he's not there to do it at all. Oh. <gasps> Hey, that was <laughs> oh, a very she's so sweet. That was a very kind. She is really good at at, um, at action. What's the name of the woman they got as Wonder Woman now? Um, Gal Gadot. I haven't seen her in anything. I just know her from the fact that she's anti Palestine. I remember that. I just remember that when she was like, you know, like, oh, pro Israel, kill the Palestinians. She's in a couple of the uh, Fast and Furious movies. Oh. Yeah. And I was sort of like when I was reading, I was going, "Gee, what a bitch!" <laughs> See, with all these, all these other um, announcements from uh, Batman vs Superman, I don't care about any of them. I don't care about, oh man, Wonder Woman's gonna be. I don't care. I really just want to see how Affleck's gonna be as Batman. Because I already, and I'm probably the only person here that does. I enjoy Henry Cavill as Superman. I think he does a great job. He's fine. I think, yeah, I think he does a fine job. I thought he was a thousand times more charismatic in the trailer for. Uh, the man from Uncle. When is that coming out? Then he out? was in the entire August? movie oh. of Man of Steel. This is a really good. This is a really good fight scene too. I, well, I will give Henry Cav- Cavell this. He's better than Brandon Routh. I th- Routh never got a fair shot. Yeah, I mean that's not to say I, Brandon Routh is fine, but, but I like. His... But I've seen I've seen yeah. a lot of other stuff that Brandon Routh is in, and I think overall Henry oh! Cavill is a better actor. Ooh, that looked ooh. Okay. <coughs> Oh, that looks like a good TV. <laughs> I really like this fight. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Hold on a second, though. Here's my question. She's trying to kill him. Yeah. So, yeah. if he kills her, does he still get in trouble, even though it's self-defense? They have to, pr- they have to, 
No, because if it's self-defense, then then it's okay. <laughs> yeah, this bitch trying to kill me. John Wick just getting noise complaints wherever he goes. <laughs> See, I, I remember a couple like I, 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 think I heard it even a couple weeks ago, but I, it was brought up maybe last year. I'm doing an all female expendables kind of thing, and I really struggled to think of anybody aside from Mila Jovovich and um, Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, and I think um, she, would, uh, Adrian Palicki, would be the only other person I can think of offhand. Somebody tried to say Kate Beckinsale, but I tried to deny it because I hate the Underworld movie. What about Zoe Saldana now? Maybe just from Colombiana, I guess. And the but, Star Trek but, films, but, but and Guardians of the, the Galaxy. Isn't yeah. the point of doing an Expendables type movie to find, you know, people who have like more of a I don't want to say cult following, but that's a good point. Well, that would have had more popularity, you know, like a what, decade or more ago. Yeah. And just bring them back. Then in that case, it would just be Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. Or Glenn Close. Glenn Close is really an action. <laughs> She's not an action movie. Yeah. <laughs> unless you're, unless you know they're dealing with giant rabbits. Yeah. Hey, those fuckers are dangerous. Food of the gods. <laughs> Winston. That would be so great if it was Ernie Hudson. <laughs> hey, I called it with the key maker. It's, that's not Ernie Hudson. Fun. Ernie we, Hudson's an underrated actor. I think he's yeah. great. I love Tim in Congo. I was just, I was just <laughs> thinking the same thing. You know, Him and Tim Curry are the only actors oh, in that movie that know what movie they're there's in. There's one more. Delroy Lindo. Stop eating my <laughs> sesame cake. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, and, and Bruce Campbell. Yeah. And, 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 and he does this. <gasps> and that's it. And every great action movie needs at least one good action sequence in a church. I'd agree with that. There's no church in <laughs> Die Hard. There's no church in The Grey. Nobody steps on a church in my town, David. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. But with Die Hard, there's an exception because it takes place on Christmas. Oh. <laughs> hey. I love how there's hitmen, like, just sprinkled throughout the congregation. <laughs> that wasn't very kind. Yeah. Now, I would think as a hitman, <laughs> wearing a tie would not be a good idea because it would, like, Get in your way and be flailing about everywhere. Oh, but and if somebody could grab you and just go... Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, but you're forgetting. He's John fucking Wick. Well, that's yeah. true. He's John Wick. <laughs> now, wouldn't it have been funny if that was actually Derek, <laughs> Derek Jacoby or Malcolm McDowell and be like, hey, it's Malcolm McDowell. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get another, you know, really recognizable... Get as many recognizable character actors. What if it was Shatner? <laughs> oh, God. Vigo will... No, because me. William Shatner never plays second fiddle to anyone. <laughs> Especially Keanu Reeves. you imagine like you... Go do this scene, Will, like this. Ah, uh, please don't tell me how to do it. <laughs> it sickens me. Don't tell me how to say motherfucker. I say it, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't say motherfucker. You say motherfucker. I say motherfucker. Oh, yeah. nice shot. Hamana, 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 hamana. Have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not the Blu rays. Not the doubloons. Oh. I don't know, burn it. <laughs> Burning all the copies of Bill and Ted Part 2. <laughs> I burns. like Bogus Journey. <laughs> There's, I know, the, I know, the, for me, it's one name, two words. William Sadler? William Sadler. <laughs> he is hilarious. And he does death. a great job playing bass. <laughs> but it's also the fact it's just a send up on the seventh seal. That's yeah. what I really like about it. And I love his love. I like how they play Twister. Oh, yeah, and his bit about his butt, where yeah. he's like, what about my butt? Going back to asses. <laughs> Would you say William Sadler's ass is great in that movie? He says it is. <laughs> you see his ass in Die Hard 2? Oh, he has yeah. a nice that's ass a, in Die that's Hard That's a good ass. So, William Sadler, you have a nice ass. It's not George Clooney nice, but it's up there. Oh, At least her teeth are okay. Dude, her eyes are great. <laughs> Wait a minute, he does look familiar to me. He, he's one of the he, he's like one of those character actors we've all oh. like we've seen like more than a few people who are great, but they're character actors, so we can't name them off the top of the I'm head. I'm looking them up right now. Nathan, get on the phone. I am on that shit. 
Give a call I to the White House. Okay, I'm willing to bet he's paid a police chief at least once. Yeah. Why? Because he's black? He's got a mustache? Yes. Are you serious? 100%. His name is Clark Peters. He's been in The Wire. Not anymore. Oh, that's why I recognize him. From, well, not that uh, part. He was in True Detective. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, he's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's mostly like... TV. It looks like. It's Fiegel. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Oh, he was in Oz, too. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? A lot of Oz connections. They love, they love the I, I just, Oz cast. I just love the whole thing that this guy could have spared himself everything, had his entire empire if he had just handed over his son. Yeah, yeah. really. See, that's what, well, like I said, that's what I would have done. Hell, it's not like he even likes his son. Yeah, really. His son's a douche. Like, fucking let him go. Because think about, well, here's the other thing. Is like he's and the plus heir you to know the it's throne, John Wick, right? so you know he's gonna yeah, come anyway. Uh, he could easily have another son. Well, I know, but that's the other thing, though, with the, having the heir to the throne. If he goes and he dies, <laughs> wait, it's heir just, to the he throne? He was in Game of Thrones. Oh. It's all connected. <laughs> Which is actually kind of funny because <laughs> that's what happens with in, in Game. Well, you you've seen Game of Thrones. You know what happens yeah. with him, where yeah. he's like, I want to be, I want to be like my yeah, and he oh, the stars. yeah. And what happens? He gets his dick yeah. locked off. Dun dun dun. Again, I like this because he's like a human action hero. Like again, like John McClane, where John McClane gets fucked up in Die Hard, and in this movie, John Wick gets fucked up. People like seeing that. I think that's, that's like another thing you don't see lately anymore. Even in the the later Die Hard movies, like, especially yeah. the last one, Good Day to Die Hard, where he's getting fucked up. But then, like, two scenes later, oh, he's perfectly fine. That's why I don't like any of the Die Hard movies after, um, with a vengeance. I liked the, uh, Live Free or Die Hard just fine. The, even, even though it's so different from the other ones, it's still, well, I still find it entertaining. Well, in that one, he's, he's not that human guy anymore. He's like, it's, it's just like, he still, he takes this damage, but he's like, okay, I'm fine. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna sound really stupid, but one of my <laughs> big issues with the, the last two Die Hard films... Bruce Willis is bald. I just can't see John McClane I, without I, the hair. Well, the thing I is, do, I do wish he would have grown his hair back. For I can see. Or just get a wig. Well, here's the thing: I can see him without the the hair if his wardrobe looked like John McClane. Well, it does because I don't see because I don't his, wardrobe, see him. his wardrobe and yeah. um in both the latter two Die Hard movies don't look like John McClane. I mean, and um the and at least in my favorite Die Hard movies, uh, the first one and the third one, John McClane is like a specific um, yeah. outfit, which is you know the wife beater and normal pants. I just don't see John McClane. I just see old grumpy. Bruce Willis <laughs> <coughs> and he's like like don't call me John McClane and what was the thing about Kevin Smith where he uh, said where, like he got uh, tired where, of that shit where uh, he was walking down the street when he was shooting cop out with uh, with Bruce Willis that classic uh, cop and, out uh, and um <laughs> A couple, uh, a couple of guys uh, drove by, and they were at a stop sign, and they noticed it was Bruce Willis. Like, yeah, fucking Die Hard, dude. We love Die Hard. Yeah, Bruce Willis stone like stone faces them, <laughs> and then um, it's really awkward. And so Kevin Smith goes, "Hey, it must be kind of cool to have so, you know something you do that people love so much." He goes, "I fucking hate when people do that." <laughs> well, when he just comes to Die Hard, what do they want? Die, it's Die Hard. He hates. I, also, I wanted people to go and be like, "Hey, Color Knights." We saw you digging that. That was great. So he likes making a ton of them so he can have more money, but yeah. he doesn't like when people or, like that he plays that character. Or maybe he was pissed <laughs> off that he was on the set of Cop Out. I mean, that's the yeah, only thing here. He's even of. saying he doesn't like his son. Right there. Yeah. You had your wife, I had my son, and yeah. you had the far better deal. Really, this guy is just angry because he just saw the American version of Girl with Dragon Tattoo. That's why he's really angry. No, you see, he was up for the part of the, the father in Shine, and he lost to that motherfucker Armin Mueller stall. He keeps taking all the Eastern European roles, goddammit. <laughs> well, to be fair, God didn't unleash John Wick on you. He unleashed him on your son. You're just protecting him. And your your son just, you know, leeches off of your wealth and <laughs> and connections, so yeah, should have just given him up. 
Actually, you you point out Nathan Roach perdition, and it does. This does remind me of that scene in the the basement of the of the church, yeah, with, uh, right? Paul Newman and yeah. Tom Hanks. Yeah, and he's like, you know, like Michael, look around. There are only murderers here, mm. and none of us will ever see hell. <laughs> Love that movie. Yeah, such a great movie. I, you know, initially, now we'll may go on this in the future, but you know how sometimes you watch a movie and you don't like it, but then you watch it again, and you're like, what? Am, what is wrong with me? Mm-hmm. Road to Perdition was one of those movies where really? I watched I, it and I, I loved initially, it as soon as yeah, I saw it. Initially, I didn't oh. like it, but then I saw it and I was like, oh my! I saw it again. And I'm like, oh my god, what's wrong with me? This is wonderful. And Fred, I'd argue it's probably a better film than American Beauty, which. Um, oh, I'm I'm age. not a big fan of American Beauty. Yeah. I like it. I it's like it's it. it's not a bad movie. It's quite good, but I just think it's kind of overrated. Sometimes the three the three's company thing at the end got a little like, uh oh, <laughs> is he sucking that wiener for cash? <laughs> Time to go kill me some Kevin Spacey. I never thought of it like it's compared to Three's Company, but you're right. It does. It is kind of like that. Oh God. Jesus. This is a great line too. That's good. That was oh, in like God. every trailer yeah. and every TV spot I saw for that. Jesus. <laughs> no, John. Use your magical abilities to get out of that fucking plastic bag. Oh, he doesn't have any magical abilities. He just has friends. Willem Dafoe, you son of a bitch. Good show. <laughs> <laughs> Told you he knows kung fu. <laughs> God, this is such a better action film than much of, much of the junk we get nowadays. Yep. Because it's, I had, I, you know, I'm gonna say it, the best action movies are rated R. Th- that's the other thing, though. When we talk about it, like you know, how some people they complain, like like saying watching all these action films, even the ones that are R rated, you feel that they're they're gutless, that they don't have anything yeah. about them, that they mm-hmm. feel um, there's emotionless that there's no drive behind it but something like this or drag or, yeah. and you watch it, you go this is wonderful it's gorgeous and it's cinematically it works but of course it doesn't make oh, did this make it a lot of money at the box office I think it made either it enough decent. it did decent yeah. and I think it made enough especially through word of mouth it, it, prob- yeah. it probably did better overseas I'm guessing yeah and the thing is word of mouth is huge in this movie was, was this oh, released yeah, I, Christmas yeah. was it no I think it was around mm. September October yeah. kind of time <laughs> it's a shame, though, especially with with with. And uh, you know what? Yeah. You know what I actually felt was a really good uh, action movie that I that I don't know people get enough credit for. Well, the good. last Rambo movie that Stallone did. I oh, enjoyed yeah. that a lot. I, I like that a lot too. It's been a while since I've seen that. I it's one of the. Yet. It's the only other great Rambo movie aside from First Blood. Oh gosh! Remember when we saw the '80s class? We saw Rambo: First Blood Part Two. Yeah. We were dying. We were laughing. Okay, so I'm for him. <laughs> oh God! God, that movie. And then the end with the Frank. Was it the Frank Stallone song? Yeah. Or then with the What would you do? And it's like, oh my God, we were dead. You, you want to know why something like that works in something like Commando? Because Commando has to be part, partially. Oh my movie. God, I love Commando. Commando's great. That is the, the best. In my opinion, the best eighties. And also, movie. Commando, written by Jeff Loeb. Who is now all, who was a huge comics guy? Oh, who really? Wrote, yeah, who wrote Batman: The Long Halloween, Batman: uh, oh. Haunted Night, Batman: Dark Victory, Superman for All Seasons, um, a run on the Hulk. He wrote Spider Man Blue, Daredevil Yellow, uh, Hulk Gray, and he was working on Captain America White, along with Tim Sale until that kind of fell through. And the Twilight series. Silence. <laughs> How dare you mention Twilight? <laughs> During John Wick, I'll, I'll I'll bring up something a little more upbeat. I just looked it up. This movie cost twenty million dollars to make, wow. approximately, which it doesn't. It looks like it cost a lot more. Yeah, yeah. it's surprising. Well, because people know what the Wor- fuck doing. worldwide uh-huh. box office was seventy eight million. Oh, that's really good. In that's the good. U.S. alone, it was forty three. Oh, okay. And well, then and then thirty five overseas. It could so have. I guess it, it wasn't open. It, it could end up being a thing like Austin Powers. Austin awesome Powers wasn't that great in theater as far as, as, far as box office mm-hmm. goes. It made its money elsewhere. Now, is there potential for a sequel in this? Uh, they they're thinking about doing a sequel, but personally, after seeing it, I kind of don't want a sequel, even though I love the movie because it ends perfectly. Yeah. I just like that he finally did the smart thing and sold his son out. Yeah. I I, I would think instead. <laughs> <of> this, <yeah. laughs> 
Well, the graphics got really shitty all of a sudden. That's that's, awesome. that's good. I like of that. Of course they're fucking playing COD. Of course <laughs> they are. That's a I love it. That's a nice little. That's a, it's. I think what I also like about it is like not only is it visually stuck, but I love that there is this really good sense of humor that permeates throughout the entire film. That it's. I mean, it's serious about oh, what pardon, it does. Pardon me, that can't be caught. It looks like a futuristic game. Pardon me. Is it Gear, Gears it of might, War? No, might, Gears of War. I don't know. Be, Halo? Yeah, it might be Halo. Oh, your dog's gone retarded. Chasing his tail. Yeah. Sorry to all the retarded dogs out there. Didn't mean to be Hey, offensive. wolf. Meow. Meow. Are you doing like Timmy the retarded cat from How It's Dirt? Mew. Tweet. Mew. <laughs> Yeah, I would think if they were making a sequel that they would do, because, yeah, after this movie, you don't really know where it would go from here, yeah. but I would think they would do a prequel instead of a sequel to kind of show John Wick while he was still, you know, a hired hitman, that kind of thing. Or, or just in general, just keep it as it is. Like, sometimes... Oh! <laughs> I like the woman's ass in the background. <laughs> He loves ear shots, man. Well. What if that was his thing when he was an assassin? <laughs> that, that was his trademark? It's like, he got shot through the ears. It's, it must be John Wick. Goddamn Wick. <laughs> what would be the most embarrassing way to die? Like, you get shot somewhere. What would be the most embarrassing way to die? You know, most people walk away from the explosion. John Wick walks towards them. Yeah. <laughs> so... What would be the most embarrassing way most to die? Embarrassing way get to shot die. in the specific part. I'd say you get shot in the okay. asshole. And you oh, die. if we're just talking about embarrassing ways to get shot, but the most embarrassing way and to you die, die from it. The most embarrassing way to die, I think, would be to drown in a swimming pool. Well, I mean, in the you get of shot the ocean on a cruise ship. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, I mean, when you get shot in a specific body part and you die from it. Shot up the ass and comes out through your mouth. Nathan, <laughs> how can I beat that? Uh, shot in the dick, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. And then you bleed out? Yeah. That's more just sad than embarrassing. <laughs> Here it comes. There we go. Hey, buddy. Come here. Hey, buddy. The dog's getting restless. Because he smells the food that's still on the table. I was hoping he would have shot him a few more times. Make him feel it. Make I just, suffer I, a little No, more. I just like it's like, that's all you are to me. Boom. <laughs> Boom. There. It's done. And he goes back. To being a ghost. Oh, man, maybe. I'm so high. Done, God damn it! Make the arrangements. <laughs> oh, I'm so high. Well, time to fuck. <laughs> Come here, honey. Come, give me an air. Fuck that shit, Pat Blue Ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> I love the elevator music that's playing in the lobby. Oh, <laughs> Does he get a new doggy? No. God damn it. He gave him keys to a doggy? What? Even doggy <laughs> even doggy was paid, yeah? Even doggy was paid. <laughs> of course that was replaced by a new quote he gave him as Reddit, even doggy was under contract. That stupid pug. Oh hi doggy. It's nowhere near as cool as his Mustang. It's not as cool as the Beagle. That should be a new car, the Mustang Beagle. <laughs> Maybe that's what the sequel's gonna be. John Wick goes to the puppy store and lots of crazy shit happens. Like, it looks just like a Mustang, but it's the size of, like, a mini. <laughs> the Mustang Beagle. <laughs> He's looking at it. He keeps getting on the He keeps bones. jumping yes, up and just dog peeking over his... the table. <laughs> you, you want the you want the wings? You want the wings? You want the wings? I'm glad to meet you. Glad to meet you. You'll never retire. I'm sure you'll come back for at least one sequel. I'm sure you'll come back at least once. The jo John Wick reloaded and then John Wick Revolutions. Okay, she wants the contract, why doesn't she just get out of her car and shoot him right there? Yeah. But the contract's off of him. Remember? Oh, that's right. I forgot. Or maybe she doesn't know it because she's stupid. I 
I'm gonna say it. I think he looks cooler in this movie than he ever did in any of the Matrix movies. Oh hell yeah! Again, he just oh, looks yeah, he was slick. Look cool, I guess. Yeah. In Matrix, he looked cool in the first one. This one, he just looks like a slick badass. But I, I, I do love the fact that it was him <laughs> in the Matrix because you know they they wanted like Will Smith, but he, oh god, if he would have been wrong because Will yeah. Smith is Will a, Smith would have made it funny, yeah. which, as we saw in Wild Wild West instead of yeah. because <laughs> Jim West desperado. Wait, 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 Wild Wild West wasn't funny. <laughs> yeah, but that was the, no, but that was the point. Yeah, yeah. Jim West was turned out just a comedic character when he probably should have been the serious one. Oh. But but Matrix is also a much more stylized kind yeah. of film. But it got to that point after the first one. It got to the point where everything looked like a too well choreographed dance. Yeah, which is set, set to you know which, club music. Which uh, preview when we finally do it? That's exactly my problem with every single Star Wars prequel lightsaber duel. Look way too choreographed. Yeah, but something about the lightsaber battles in Star Wars still looked cool. Like, it was still kind of fun to watch. With the Matrix, I don't know, it's all just... It looks like dance moves, because they're all just hitting each other with their hands. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, I was just... I was into the movie. <laughs> what were we talking about? Uh, John Wick. Oh. Does he work for Loveless? He's got a spider tattoo. He works for Spider-Man. <laughs> I can't help it if I'm a terrible shot. <laughs> but you didn't like him anyway. Oh. Oh. Doggy, it's okay. Willem Dafoe's gonna live. <laughs> I think. You don't care about Willem Dafoe. He just wants them wings. <laughs> I've never wanted to be killed by a hot woman so much. <laughs> Until this movie. <laughs> That's why I killed you last. Oh, Marcus, I lied. I lied. Oh, God, now he's gonna make him... Ah! Right in the bone. Oh, I'm sorry that look. <laughs> She's fucking into it. <laughs> She's loving it. She's getting wet now. Mm. It's the kneecaps that do it for her. No, it's not raining. It's just Perkins. <laughs> Jesus. That's badass. Nice. Damn. No one kills me. I go out on my own. It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. You could probably do a good... I don't care uh, what anyone says. <laughs> Garfield had better one-liners. <laughs> you could probably oh, do a good uh, character death montage with uh, Willem Dafoe. Just yeah. like the Sean Bean ones. Oh, see. God, yeah. Who thinks died more? Bean or... Oh, Bean. Sean Bean. It's Bean gotta be Bean. Sean Bean. You know what would be great? A reboot of Mr. Bean with Sean Bean. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, <laughs> I would go, pay good money to see that. I would. Then they then they digitally reinsert Rowan Atkinson in Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, God. I'm trying to remember. Has Rowan Atkinson done anything dramatic? I think so. I'm sure he has. Probably it's mainly a. He's just Britain. not known for it. Yeah, it's probably just mainly in Britain. If anything, I do know in a. Um, in a charity special, he played a uh, he played the doctor. Oh yeah, it was comedic oh, comedic yeah. doctor with yeah. uh, Hugh Grant yeah. and uh, a couple of which yeah. reason why I probably wouldn't mind seeing Jim Rowan Atkinson. I, think I honestly would too. not mind seeing Rowan Atkinson as the doctor or any of the ones they picked. Um, uh, like uh, Hugh Grant and Jim Broadbent was the doctor. Wasn't was Hugh like, Grant up to play the doctor at one point? I think he, he was, was yeah. for Eccleston. Yeah, I think I'm he was. Glad he was, he was supposed to be for the reboot, the first season. Yeah. Reboot. I'm kind of glad they went with Eccleston though. Oh, me too. I love Eccleston. That well, and that it also would have been too big because people would be focused on the doctor. Yeah. It would be like, "Hey, it's Hugh Grant." <laughs> and this is the great thing: the the uh, Vigo could have let it lie. He could have left it alone. Mm -hmm. But no, let sleeping dogs lie. This, this part's true. great. I love this scene. Oh God, the atmosphere! Fuck yeah. Oh, that's, I love that. <laughs> no, you're not going to go back down there. Uh-oh. Oh! I love that voice. <laughs> <laughs> the 
See, the, I would have laughed I, if all the hitmen just hit each other. <laughs> they all just all, and you're, and I oh, guess there was a reservation yeah. for one. I was I was actually expecting him to go, my man. <laughs> this is the first time someone calls him Jonathan. No, I thought he is called it, him. Did, he call, did yeah. Ian McShane call him Jonathan earlier? Yeah. Oh, okay. I like I that he's the only one who calls him Jonathan. Yeah, that's he's nice. Fucking touch. badass. I just like it, you know, Vigo couldn't let it slide. Mm -hmm. He could, and he would, you know, not have, still have to deal with John Wick. Yeah. Well, when you're a Carpathian. Yeah. <laughs> he just needs a kitten. He just <laughs> needs kitten love. <laughs> That was not me, ladies and gentlemen. That was somebody else. <laughs> For the first time of the night, it wasn't David passing yeah. the gas. For the first time in the history of the commentators. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other one was just like, you know... Our illustrious food, history, the... yes. Yes. <laughs> this long, illustrious yes. history of, what, five episodes yeah. so far? Six? The six! Oh, I was just starting to enjoy my drink. Oh, come on, John. You just got that car. Well, if you're going to get a car for free, might as well have fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> Whee! Oh, oh. Well, someone's going to need that car insurance. God, $20 million? This is a... <laughs> so everyone involved in this movie knew what they were doing. This is a smart usage of $20 million. It's, It reminds me of Pan's Labyrinth, right? That looks like it cost $100 million. And it really just cost $30... $5. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, you know, pesos. Yeah, yeah. pesos. <laughs> so, oh, given boom. for... <laughs> An another movie I always think of is um, the Robert Rodriguez produced Predators movie. Oh, oh, which only cost? cost like 20 or 30 million dollars. Really? Yeah, it, and it looks like it costs wow. so much more. Or, or if you look at a movie like Superman Returns, which costs like between 250 yeah. and 300 million. It doesn't, and it look, doesn't like look like it. Yeah. It looks like it costs... More than half, or less than half that. Yeah. Which is a shame because Brian Singer's, you know, X Men films, like, you mm. definitely get your bang for your buck on screen mm -hmm. there. God, but. that's so awesome. But just some people are not right for Superman. You know what we wanted to see do Superman? Brad Bird. Yeah, actually, that's. Oh, point, I could see that. I'd argue because be we mentioned this, I mentioned this last week. Um, for me, the best, super, uh, the best Superman film is The Iron Giant. Well, think about it. No, right? it's, it's a good Superman movie, but my, my favorite is still either uh, Donner's or Man of Steel. But it, yeah, for me, it's the best, or at least but, the idea of what you know, Superman I'm means. The, I'm worried about yeah. that even after the summer is over, the best Fantastic Four movie will still be The Incredibles. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Isn't it also the best Watchmen film, too? I like Snyder's Watchmen. But The Incredibles is better. I don't. The, how is that, the how Incredibles is, is better than most movies. How is the Incredibles it. Watchmen though? <laughs> well, no, it's the idea of like outlawing, uh, you know, that sort of thing. For me, the best recent su Superman movie was Captain America Two. If you're gonna watch a movie about someone fighting for truth, justice, in the American way, Captain America: Winter Soldier pulled that off perfectly. No, this is truth, <laughs> justice, in the American way. <laughs> Oh, I geez. love that reaction. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, this I, I this is see funny. that's what you get for getting cocky. This is like the best Don't usage cocky, of Keanu Reeves and since the Matrix, would you say? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. You could have just rolled it down. Oh, a man. <laughs> you know what I? Oh, oh, that was good. That was really good. Oh, that's a good shot too. God, just wonderful shots in this. You know what I see this reminds me of? It, it does remind me of um, the Arnold movies. Not in a sense like, you know, oh, it comes upon him. Oh. But I mean, in terms of, because Arnold w would always admit he was never a good actor. But he knew what his limitations were as an actor. And he did his best to get directors and mm -hmm. writers and such to hide his weaknesses. In this case, Keanu Reeves is not, you know, Olivier when it comes to acting. But... He knows his strength as an mm -hmm. actor, yeah. and he knows his weaknesses, and he's got a crew that's helping him out, and I really like that. Just, just don't put him in a period piece and make him British. <laughs> that's, 
Just, just don't. He he learned that the hard way, I think. Yeah. <laughs> no more guns. No less guns. <laughs> oh, jeez. And they keep upping the ante when it comes to visuals. And now we're, you know, we got the Rainer Frog. <laughs> ah, I tried to trick ya. <laughs> well, that's good. Ouch. This is the kind of fight scene I like where it's not or you you know over choreographed. It's just I yeah. want to fuck this person up. It kind of reminds just have a beat down. It, it reminds me of another rain soaked Keanu battle that was the Matrix. A, that was a little too much where it got silly. You know the one <laughs> the shot big where there's fat rain. Yeah, yeah, where they're flying around and going wee 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 and like waters and you're just like I know they think it looks cool, but it now it's gotten silly. <laughs> Again, Star Wars prequels, lightsaber fights, and for me many elements of, of uh, Man of Steel where I just go, that's it, I check out, I'm laughing. It makes me sad because I shouldn't laugh, but I'm laughing. Another another movie yeah. I really like from recently that has these kind of brutal, realistic fight oh, scenes like this is... Uh, I love that. Good. Is uh, the the Tom Cruise uh, Jack Reacher movie? Yeah, Jack movie. Reacher's good. That has some really good, me, just, just it brutal, pissed, painfully looking fights. It pissed me off that more people didn't see it. Jack Reacher was fucking good. Oh, yeah, I love Jack Reacher. The thing about Tom Cruise, when it, actually when it comes to most of his action films, is that... He delivers. He, well, in terms of, like, if we talk about how we want to see the, the hero get the, the shit beaten out of him, it's like, it seems like in almost every Tom Cruise action film you see, he gets the shit yeah. beaten out oh, of yeah. him. <laughs> see, in, he's in... As much as I love the James Bond series, I think that Mission Impossible is the best spy film I've ever seen. First one? The, the first, first one? Yes. The first oh, one's really good. I love the first one. I'm a big fan of the third one as well. I'm a third, one, third, one's third and fourth ones are my favorite. I love Ghost Protocol. The first one, the reason I love it is because it's... He he doesn't fire a gun. It's It seems like an that's actual just, spy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He doesn't. Now that I think of it. And it's also one of the... Oh, God, that's cool. It's a, it's one of the uh, three Brian De Palma movies I actually like. Yeah, I was about to mention that because see, Cameron here is not a big fan of Brian De Palma. I Let like me guess it. the other two. The Untouchables? Yeah. Mm. Carrie? Phantom of the Paradise. You don't like Carrie? Carrie's alright, but I like Phantom of the Paradise way better. Yeah, but then that's four. Because you like Carrie? Uh, if you give me a choice... Let me put it this way. If you give me a choice which Carrie to watch, I might actually choose the remake. Ooh. Rem I like the remake. Yeah, the remake's good. But when it, comes to, when it comes to Brian De Palma's Carrie, thumbs up or thumbs down? Can I just go thumb middle? No, you have to put push comes to shove. I like the, I like the Brian. I'm, I'm not a big Brian De Palma fan either, but... Yeah, he has a, he has I'll a give, handful I'll give, of I'll give it like really a weak like. thumbs up. There you, you go, some... we got four. We got a four. <laughs> we got four here. Aw. I want to go home, Mommy. I want to go kill more people. <laughs> I'm just remembering the bit from Dress to Kill when she finds out what that she's got herpes or something, <laughs> and then she dies. <laughs> As one is wont to do. Yeah. Oh, boo. No. I saw a bunch of people online recently complaining that there's going to be a that um they're remaking Scarface. And I went, oh, you mean again? Yeah, no yeah. Can. Scarface was already a remake. Yeah, I'm actually I'm, a, I'm for it just because you know how Scarface like was supposed to represent like the 30s, Scarface representing the late 70s, getting into the 80s, and now a new Scarface will represent what we are in the With aughts, cyber 70s. cocaine. Oh, shit. Hey, I'm down for it. Cyber cocaine. They get their little avatars to to snort cocaine at Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Oh, you just use peroxide. That suit's ruined. Is that an <laughs> option in Grand Theft Auto Five where you can snort cocaine? No, but you can snort cocaine in the Scarface video game. Oh, you can? Yes. Yeah. Which I which is weird. I, I hate Scar I hate the uh, De Palma Scarface with Pacino, but the game is awesome. <laughs> I love the game. Scarface works better as a game. Did people say hello to your little friend? Oh, he got a new doggy. He, gets, he goes doggy shopping. He has the pick of the litter. Oh, Aww, I take them all, because fuck it, I got a lot of money. I can afford all these doggies. But that's somebody else's dog. Aww. 
See, that one's not nearly as cute as the one he had. Oh, but it's a... You don't it's a, but, it's a, but it is a pit bull. He looks like a relative of Hooch. <laughs> it is a pit bull like, you know, like he is. He's a, John Wick is a pit bull. But he's cute like a beagle. Well, look at him, look at her trying, I think that's a her. Oh. Look at her trying to walk So in the off. sequel, he it'll be like years later and he's trained this dog to like kill people. So it'll be him and his dog going out and killing people. The movie's by, over. Yep. That wow. was a great movie. I... I enjoyed it. I, I, that was very well done, Nathan. Oh yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah, I liked it the first. Eva Longoria. Now here's the thing: Eva Longoria. Eva Longoria goes from the hot milf on <laughs> Desperate, uh, Desperate Housewives to producing awesome action movies. I could not believe it when I saw that. I was like, "Wow, that is a turn. Good, Good for, for her. her." Yeah. Hope and, she uh, keeps doing it. You know who else is now a producer in the in the movie business? Is on the horror side of things. Heather Langenkamp. Oh, oh, so not only that, but she's a makeup artist, too, mm -hmm. along with her husband. husband. And you actually get to see her in Star Trek, Into, well, you don't see her, but Into Darkness. You know that weird little alien that controls the the, the cell, that yeah. conga? Uh, That's her under all that makeup. Uh, okay. And I remember a bunch of people were like, hey, where's, where is she? Where is she? And it's like, there she is. Tyler Bates did the music. Yeah. Tyler Bates did with the With other people, I missed the other people. Yeah. <laughs> the other people. <laughs> well, I missed who they were. And I love this shot. It's like this 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 point of view shot from God looking over the city. Where's John Wick going to go next? Who knows? Keanu Reeves, John Wick. There's nothing else you even need to don't even show the credits. That's it. <laughs> the end. Boom. That's that's mm -hmm. Michael. That, that's whatever. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Alfie Allen. Alfie. That's the that's the uh, yeah. It's oh, Dickless. Oh, Adrian Pilecki. That's right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, who's Brian Moynihan? Oh, was that she her? was the wife. Oh. Uh, that was kind of a thankless role if you think about it. It was it was important. Though. Oh no, no, it was important. But she's like, I'm I'm dead. You only see me in footage or flashbacks. Yeah, she got she got pretty high, you know, credit on that. She got like yeah, fourth sure. name on the list. She's got a good agent. With John Leguizamo, and who gets the end? And Willem Dafoe. That's how I think you know your your career has made it. You know, if, if you get an with, and, if you're with or an end. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, this is going to sound so so dumb, but it, one of the things I liked about the Star Wars prequels, at least the last two, was like, it goes, and Christopher Lee. I'm like, yay. And Christopher Lee is the guy we're trying to get to save these movies. <laughs> and he's like, I'm not going to save this. Okay, crossover. John Wick versus Dread. How would that work? <laughs> Who cares? It's John Wick and Dread in the same movie. They get along just as long as Dread doesn't bring up any weird little laws concerning the dog, right? <laughs> uh, that dog isn't on a leash. <laughs> and You're not on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's the Stallone Judge Dread? Then it would be over. <laughs> then it would be over so quickly. Wick would kill kill him. <laughs> what if they did a movie called Dread vs. Dread and it was Carl Urban vs. Sylvester be, Stallone? Then it would be five minutes long and <laughs> Carl Urban's Dread would kill Stallone's Dread. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually quite a fan of the Stallone Judge Dread. For, for, me, for me, it's like the Wild Wild West. It's a movie that is so over the top and oh, ridiculous and Stallone's, bad Stallone's that Judge it makes Dread. Stallone's Judge Dread is way better than Wild Wild West. <laughs> I'll is. give it that. It I'll is. give it that, yeah. It is. But it's, I can't break the law. I am the see, law. See, that's the thing. That's what that's what finally sealed the deal for it. me with uh, Urban's dread. I was loving it. Then when he said, then when he finally delivered, "I am the law," it was so good because it wasn't. Oh, oh, it's it was, perfect. My right. law is not the law. I am the law. All right. See, now we're gonna have something special. We're gonna play a game. It's called Guess the Stallone. We're gonna go in random order, and you, the audience, have to guess. Who did the Stallone impersonation? And I'll point. We will see, and we'll go. Number one. It's never over! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to give it a second. That was, that was, oh my god. We're going to give sorry. it a second. We're going to give it a second. Number two. <laughs> Number three. I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> That's a that shitty was, Stallone. That was too perfect, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, actually, the thing is, because I've actually, I met Stallone, and the thing about Stallone is, 
He really talks like this. He goes like, hey, I'm really glad you liked the movie. It was a lot of fun making it, you know? And we had to get everything together, and it was really a little fun. But everybody always does this with Stallone. When they're doing impersonations, always, <laughs> Have you ever seen that um, studio film that Matt Stone and Trey Parker did that had yes. Stallone in it? Yeah, have a wine cooler, Brainiac. <laughs> No, you see, we're just warning you people that in the future we may just do an entire episode doing Stallone. Doing Stallone impressions? Yeah. We might just do an entire episode where we're doing impressions. You have to figure out who's doing what. Yeah. <laughs> we should just call it, hey, let's all make idiots out of ourselves. We already do that <laughs> on a daily basis. But yeah, John Wick. I like it. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's I great. prefer Dread. But I do like this movie. It is very... It's the best action film since Dread. And I think it's honestly... For me, it kind of competes with Dread. To me, Die Hard is my favorite action movie of all time. This competes with Die Hard for me. I have to be honest, because you make that... Because I'm always kind of like a little apprehensive about saying best action film since Dread. Because I, but I have to say this. I can't, off the top of my head, recall of an action film since Dread that really stuck out to me. I mean, because I don't think... Was Drive the same year? But does Drive count as an action film? Drive is all... Um, I don't know. Drive is... It does have action I would in say it, Drive is almost more of like a crime... Like a, yeah. Like a crime It's, it's more thriller, yeah. yeah. More thriller than uh, action. <laughs> oh, boo. That's what this needs. If Michael Jackson is John Wick, I'm gonna come get you. Kill my dog. I oh, you pay... kill my dog. That's ignorant. Yeah. I would pay money for that. You have no idea how much I would pay money. Is he a <laughs> movie? He... Okay, tell me that. Yeah, you... Okay, bath. He keep asking me if I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Shimon. Tell Shimon. me that you would. Okay, tell me that you would not watch a movie where it's like full on hardcore rated R action movie starring Michael Jackson. <laughs> tell me you wouldn't watch that, and I'll call you a liar. That'd be interesting. I'd like to go see that. <laughs> Well, Come movie, on. Movie's over. Movie's We're, over. That's over. Right. Credits are over. It's done. Hooray. And uh, next week we have a very special episode for WrestleMania weekend. Yes, we do. Um, should we give a hint? What would be a good hint about this film? Let the hint oh, be that it's WrestleMania um, well, weekend. Um, oh, I know what the hint is. Well, the, I, have an, I have Let's see. My hint would be, um, while it doesn't star Hulk Hogan, you might mistake the lead for Jake the Snake Roberts. Yep. <laughs> oh, and also another hint I'll give is that we're actually getting uh, prestigious. This is an Academy Award nominated film that it, we're dealing with. You mean Sallow wasn't? Oh. Instead of a movie that deserved, instead of a movie that deserved to be like John Wick. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, they they haven't gotten to those action films yet. Although RoboCop did get an honorary Oscar for its sound editing. Well, you got to get a silver lining somewhere. It still counts. It still counts. <laughs> or, the hey, Matrix won four Oscars. And I know you're not a big fan of Born Ultimatum. That won three Oscars. Inception won four Oscars. So there are some action Inception films. It's more of a caper movie. Like a but but it still has action in it, right? It's still... Well, then so does Saving yeah. Robert Ryan. Yeah, but that's kind of more prestigious in the fact it's like it's about World War II. It's important. <laughs> yeah. So anyways... So uh, killing up? puppies isn't important, David? Is that what you're uh, trying to say? Yeah. I think that's exactly what you're trying to say. Uh, look, look at him. What he a dick. He's looking at you for that. Yeah. I'm sorry, poopy. <laughs> but you're not as important as World War II. <laughs> at least in the Academy's eyes. <laughs> Why, do you think they should have nominated the Ugly Dachshund for a Best Picture of the Year? <laughs> do you feel they should? Well... <laughs> you had a Dachshund. Yeah, I did. But Dean Jones was, you know, him and his homophobic ass deserved this is for the I bet when the thing. dog died at the end of Marley and Me, you were like, good. <laughs> you deserved it. <laughs> you fucking cry, Owen Wilson. You fucking cry. Okay, well, I'm Cameron. All right, the credits are long yeah, over, yes. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm Cameron. I'm Nathan. <laughs> and I'm a guy who hates dogs, apparently. Also known as David. And we were the commentators. We just got done commentating. On John Wick. Whoa. We deserve a lot of money because we didn't resort to tons of Keanu Reeves jokes. We got Because the movie of. was too good. That is true. <laughs> Instead, we made fun of Stallone. Yeah. Goodbye. Uh, adios. Goodbye, children. That's ignorant.